Howdy folks, welcome back for another Feature Friday. I'm your host Ryan Glover and this week we're going to be talking about building a reusable notifications module. Now don't get too excited, I know that's a thrilling topic, but uh, uh, jokes aside this actually is something very important. So uh, what do I mean by reusable notifications module? So when you're building a product, and of course we're going to do this in the context of command because that's what I've been working on and hopefully that's, that's helping you folks to understand how uh, a product as a whole comes to life. Uh, but in the context of a product, what I'm talking about is when something happens in an application, so some sort of event or a user performs some sort of action, typically, or in a lot of cases I should say, uh, you're going to want to notify somebody about that. So if your application has the concept of team members, so you have one user but then they're a part of a team with other people, you're going to want to notify those other people that something happened in relation to some data in your application. So like in the case of command, I have this concept of cards that I'm working with. So something I haven't done yet is making it possible. So if somebody uh, opens a new card or leaves a comment on a card that's assigned to somebody, that person isn't being notified in any way. So nobody on the team right now knows that this stuff is going on. So I want to I wanna fix that and make sure that that's, that's working. So uh, when I say reusable notifications, the reason I, I use that phrase and I don't say something like email notifications or in-app notifications is because those two things, so in this case email and uh, in-app notifications, so like I don't have this yet, but like a little doodle up here in the corner where it's like the, the badge and you get the drop down and all, all the works of that. Uh, those are two different types of what is technically the same thing. Meaning, well, in some cases I might want to send off an email or in some cases I might want to send off an in-app notification uh, or maybe even a text message or something like that. So a notification by itself is just saying, something's going out, we're going to broadcast something out, but it doesn't explicitly mean that the medium we're going to use to do that broadcast needs to always be the exact same thing. Uh, we can design our system like that, but it's not the most efficient. So when I say reusable notification module, what I'm talking about is a way to uh, write one function where we can say, okay, this is the event that happens. So if somebody commented on a card, we'll say. So that's our notification, but then that function is responsible for broadcasting that message out via all the different mediums that that specific notification requires. And so if you think about it like, well, I might have, uh, well, well let's, let's keep, our, let's keep our, our example here. So we've got, I'm going to comment on this card, and let's just, let's just do the process. So I'm a user posting a comment. So I add that comment. Now, in this context, so adding a comment to a card, it might be useful as a user to just be notified in-app. So maybe all I want to do is say, hey, get this in-app. Um, or I may want to email people out. So maybe do some sort of check to see if there's a current user logged in or if the user I want to notify is logged in. Something complicated like that. But the point being that I might want to fire off an email and an in-app notification at the same time. And so if I, I only do those things independently, it becomes kind of messy. But what we can do is write a single module that fires off both of those calls for us, or does that work for us. So what I want to do in this week's tutorial is actually walk you through the process of doing that. So what we're going to do is completely from scratch here, we're going to start uh, inside of command. So again, command is using the boilerplate that I've built over at Clever Beagle called PUP. So this is completely free MIT license, so if you're working on a product of your own, download a copy, try it out, it gives you everything you need to build a product, uh, at least the foundation. So it gives you all of your, your data wiring via GraphQL, it gives you an account system, uh, it gives you an email module, it gives you all sorts of goodies that you're going to need when you're building a product, but you don't really want to do it yourself. So definitely check that out. So inside of command, one of the module, or see, now I'm, I'm saying what I'm reading. Uh, one of the folders or one of the directories inside of command is the modules directory. And so this is where just I put all of my miscellaneous code. So these are like one-off functions that do something. Uh, and typically most developers will probably call this lib or something like that. Um, modules is just what rang the bells in my head whenever I, I 
last made a change to the, the folder structure in PUP. Um, and I, I just kind of stuck with it. So if you want to call that something else, go nuts. But that's essentially what this is. This is the lib folder that you might see in other projects. So uh, what I want to do is go inside of module server. So this is going to be a server only module that we're going to write. So this is something that's only going to be called from the server side code. Uh, and to clarify that, what I mean is uh, a user is going to perform an action on the client but that action is going, so we'll, we'll use the comment example. So they're going to post a comment. That's going to call to the server to insert the comment in the database. And so at that point, that's where we're going to actually fire off a notification. So we want that code to be server-side only so we don't accidentally use this on the client. Um, and technically, we won't be able to once we see what we're doing and what we're up to. Uh, so what we're going to do is say in module server, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call this send notifications singular or plural singular or plural S singular I'm gonna go with singular I might I might welch on that later but we'll see okay and the next thing I'm gonna do is something you probably annoyed at me repeating but I'm gonna repeat again which is patterns we're gonna use pattern because patterns are good and in this case um, we've talked about the action pattern before, which is one of my personal favorites. And so there's two variants of this, and this is I'm getting hung up here because I'm trying to think through, well, how is this going to be used? So I have a promise-based action, which is the, the action structure where you have one main function that calls a bunch of sub-functions in order or as, or as a series of steps. So I have that where I have a promise where I can say, wait on this thing to complete, this action to complete, and then do something else. Or I just have one that's just vanilla JavaScript, so there is no uh, promise wrapping around it. It's literally just JavaScript. And I think in this case that one's going to be right, because technically notifications, I like to think of those as a background task. I don't really want that uh, muddying up the, the, the call stack or the flow on the server side. So basically what I'm getting at is if somebody submits a comment, I don't want to have to wait on those notifications to send. I should be able to do that kind of in the background asynchronously. And if for some reason they fail, then handle that in a different way. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the, the just vanilla JavaScript action patterns. There's no promises involved here. Uh, this is just going to be, yeah, just vanilla JavaScript. So uh, again, a quick review of the action pattern. The idea is that at the bottom of the file, we have one main function that we're exporting. And that main function is ultimately what we're importing into another file and calling. So if I were to do a quick example, so we'll say this one is send notification from, we'll just make it, we'll just say blah, doesn't really matter. So, and then I'm going to call send notification, I'm going to pass it an object, which here is options. And then we're going to validate those options. So actually this is quite helpful. This will, this will help you kind of quickly understand what we're designing for here. So we know that we have a type of notification. And in this case, just to keep this a little cleaner, what I'm going to do is change this. So I'm going to say, we're going to take in two arguments. So we're going to take in type. And instead of, how do we want to do this? So what I'm getting at is there's two ways I'd like to do this. There's send notification of a type. So like we were talking, we'll say, um, add comment. So we know that add comment is a type of event that we're trying to support. Um, and then adding that comment is inevitably going to have some information associated with it or a payload. So what we're talking about here with this object is we might have like a, a comment ID, let's say comment one, two, three, and then we might have oh, like a product ID. And just to clarify, in this week's video, we're, we're only going to spec this module out. So I think what I'm going to do is another like mini-series here. So this week, we'll work on the basic design of this module, and then we'll actually start to implement it. So don't be surprised if between this video and the next one, this changes a little bit. Uh, and this is something that I highly recommend getting comfortable with is until you've kind of set in stone an API, get comfortable with changing stuff and undoing work because it's really easy to overcommit down a path that you're not fully sold on and then you back yourself into a corner later because you're like oh well 
I don't want to change it. I already did the work. It's like, scratch that. One of the ways that you can completely railroad a project and your, your, your motivation to work on that project is to just kind of like be lazy and say, like, ah, I'm just going to stick with the API I've got. It's like, take the time to get it right and you'll be much happier later and much more productive too. So, uh, yeah, I think we're, we'll, what we'll do is start with this. So we're going to say we're going to take in a type and then I'm going to call this what I was referring to it as is payload. And so now this, this validate options gets a little bit funkier, but what we're going to do is just pass both of those. So up here, this is, again, this is purpose built. So I'm, I'm going outside of the pattern, but I'm not going so far outside of it that it's going to be, hopefully, uh, when I come back to this. And, and again, this is the six month test. So when I'm dealing with patterns or writing any code, back of my mind, I'm always thinking, am I going to understand this six months from now? And in this case, this isn't so outside the lines that I'm like, mm, that might be a little funky. So I think we'll be good. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just change these. So I'm going to say, if there's not a type, uh, we'll, we'll clean this up. And let's make sure this is super clear. So we're going to say type of notification is required. And then we're going to say if there's not a payload. Uh, and you know what? Payload is not going to be required. And the reason why is you might just fire a notification where you know all of the data. Meaning uh, it's kind of like a, a canned thing. Like I don't need to know a common ID or a product ID. I just want to say like, um, like maybe new customer and it just sends out to me like, hey, heads up, somebody, somebody joined the app or something like that. Um, so the point here is we want to make sure that this is flexible. So again, we might change this, but right now my, my, my feelers are like, yeah, you know what, we're going to want to keep this kind of open-ended. So we should only validate that there's a type. As long as we've got that, we're good. So now the next question is, well, wait a minute what are we doing with that type? Like, what's the, what's the idea here? So what we're going to need is a way to define the different types. And so let's do it right here. So we're going to change this placeholder action method. We're going to change this to, um, I'm going to write this out, but I don't know if it's going to be exactly what I want. So, yeah, I don't think it is because it's going to look a little funky, to be honest. Um, so let me, let me reason through this. So what did I say? I got rid of it. Uh, add comment. So we'll use add comment as an example. It's going to be assigned to a function. It's going to be a little messy. So what we're going to do is take this. And again, this is one of those situations where I'm going to go outside of the, the pattern just a little bit. I'm going to take my crayon and be that malevolent child that colors outside of the lines and says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, if you ever see those kids, they're actually quite great. They're pretty fun to talk to. Uh, okay, so what we're going to say here is just call this notifications. Keep it generic. And notifications is going to be an object with a bunch of methods defined on it. And again, a method is just another term used to describe a function that's defined on an object. So in this case, add comment or the function is being assigned as the add comment method. So if we were to, to actually call this, it'd be something like notifications.add comment. So that, that might make a little more sense. So when we're talking about a method, that's, that's what I'm getting at here. So, what we're going to do is just do that as a placeholder for now. And then back down here, we're going to say uh, const notification equals notifications. So again, notifications is this object right here. And then we're going to say notifications type. So in this case, type, and let's, let's get our uh, example back here because I think that might help to close the loop on this. So again, this isn't exactly where we'd call this. We would call this inside of the code where we actually wanted to, to send the notification from. This is just me doing an example. So just to make sure this is clear, we'll say note. Um, just for example, call this in code elsewhere. Okay, so what we're gonna do is say add comment. And now what we wanna do is kind of think through this. So we're saying send notification, add comment. So this is our type. And we have our type here, and we're saying, let's clean that up. 
So we're just gonna make sure that we have our type. And then the next step is, okay, we're trying to see, does this notica notification exist? So add comment is the name of it. So we're trying to see on this object, is this notification even defined? And so what this code is doing is it's saying, on the notifications object, try and find a property with the name equal to the type variable that we're passing in. So add comment here is going to say, is there an add comment on the notifications object? And in this case, there is. So to make sure that this is clear, if I, if I had something called, uh, well, let's get rid of add comment. So we'll just change this to pizza. And we'll say, in this exact example, if I try to say add comment, well, notifications.addcomment no longer exists. Only notifications.pizza does. And so what we want to do is make our code a little more resilient. So what we're going to say is, if the notification exists, then we're going to use it. Otherwise, we'll just kind of fill in the blank here now. We're going to say throw an error. And we'll say, and let's make sure this is clear. So notification. And then we'll inject the name in. So we'll say notification blah does not exist. So we'll say notification type. So what this is doing is helping us as developers. So this is, this is less for anything involving a user and more for us as developers. So this is making sure that we use our own code properly or correctly. So in this case, we're saying, OK, if we can't find a notification with that name on this object, that means that it doesn't exist. So we need to alert ourselves like, hey, buddy, you either haven't done what you thought you did, or you have a typo, or something like that. Uh, but again, these sorts of errors don't need to be terribly specific. It can just be like, hey, you didn't get that right. And then that's when you say, huh? And then you go in the code, and you're like, oh, OK. <laughs> I was just being a doofus. Um, so that's what that's all about. So what we're going to do here is say, OK, well, let's assume that the notification does exist. So if it does we're going to call it as a function. And the reason we're going to do that, so again, let's make sure this is clear. So here, notification is a variable. And so what we're doing is we're storing the value at notifications type. So if we look, notifications type, the value at that point is this function. Now, this isn't like a like a JavaScript level thing. This isn't something that you're going to need to know like this isn't, this isn't a language thing. This is specific to our pattern. So in this exact instance, we expect the notifications object to contain a bunch of functions. And so here we know in our design, we can say like, well, if that notification exists, it should be a function. If, our, if we're following our own instructions or our own guide of how we want this design to work. So what we can do is just say, okay, we don't care what the notification is. We just know that, okay, it exists. And we were told that we want to call that specific notification or trigger that notification. So let's just call that function. And then we're going to pass in the payload. So again, let's go back here. And I'm just going to add comment ID, comment 123. So now what we're saying is, OK, again, doesn't matter what the type is. So in this case, add comment is the type. So if we let's let's reason through this exact flow. So we're going to say send notification of add comment and here's the payload or here's the extra data that you're going to need. So in this case saying, okay, does notification add comment exist? As of right now, no. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, well, there's no notification, so that means you want me to throw an error. Right? So that's one flow. And then two, once we're like, oh, duh, I got to define the thing. So now I've added add comment as a notification. So now our first case is going to pass. So we're going to have if notification, OK. And we expect, again, based on our design, that notification, this variable, is going to contain the function at this point. And so we're just going to say, cool, call that function passing in the payload. So in this case, passing in this object with the information or the additional information that we're going to need in order to send the notification. So that's the, the basic idea at play here. That's, that's about it. Um, the reason I like this is it means that I'm not going to have to rewrite a bunch of code over and over. Again, the, the keyword here is reusable. So now, whenever I want to send a notification, I just call code like this, 
in my actual code base. So like we were talking about earlier, when I actually write the comment to the database, I'm gonna to wanna to call this. So at that level of the code or at that point in the code, I can call send notification and then that's gonna come back to here and handle the actual sending for me. So now that's where this gets interesting. So we're taking in that payload and what's nice about this is this can be hyper specific because we know that add comment is only concerned with notifying somebody that a comment was added, nothing else. So like here, you just saw I, I destructured this value. So this is our payload, but I said like, well, adding comment, well, I know I can set the expectation for myself as the developer that comment ID is gonna be necessary. Like that's just a part of what it means to notify somebody that we've added a new comment. So what I can do is have that function that's being returned by add comment, basically assume or expect whatever it needs because it's, it's not trying to be, that one function isn't trying to be reusable, it's just the overall module that it's a part of is trying to be reusable. So uh, what we're gonna do inside of here is actually handle the process of sending off our notification. So again, uh, let's say like, this is where we send it, or let's, let's use the term we used earlier, so this is where we broadcast our notification. And you may have caught on at this point that, well, wait a minute, if this is just an open-ended function, we can do whatever we want here. And yes, we can. So we could, just to make this clear, we're gonna say we could send an email, we could send an in-app notification, we could send a text message, we could do all kinds of stuff in here. It's totally up to us. So. Just to make that clear, we could do whatever we wanted, but generally speaking, we want to be doing something that's sending an actual notification or broadcasting it somewhere over some medium. But generally, like I could just say like, you know, console log, wee. And so whenever we add a new comment or we call send notification with add comment, we're gonna see wee printed to the console. So, you know, something, something to have fun with. Uh, so in this case, what I care about is sending an email. So I know that send in-app notification and send text message do not exist in this application right now. So um, they might down the road, but right now they don't. So right now I'm just gonna say, all I wanna do is send off an email. And send email, unless I deleted it like a doofus. No, I did not. Everything's looking up Millhouse, turning up Millhouse. Um, we should have what we need. I believe we do, yeah. So send email is a module that's built into PUP. So the boilerplate that I'm using to build this with. Uh, so this isn't something I have to, to contemplate again. This is already designed. So what this is doing is it's not just sending an email for me, but it's allowing me to use a template. And so what we've got inside of command, and again, well, I should say inside of PUP. So I've just extended this for the sake of command, but inside of PUP, what we have is under the private directory at the root of the project, we have a nested email dash templates folder. And then inside of there, we have this base HTML. So this base HTML is kind of like the name describes. This is the, the base or wrapper HTML for a, an email. And so the idea here is that, well, we want our emails to look consistent when we send them out, but the, the actual body or content of the email is what's changing. So the, the, the logo at the top and maybe like the mailing address at the footer uh, for legal purposes, all of that stuff needs to be consistent, but the actual like, here's the title of it and the body content of the email, that's what's changing. So what we're doing with this base HTML is we're saying, okay, this is the outer wrapper. And then you'll notice like in here, I've got all these little snippets. So we'll say like beta invitation. So we'll notice this content this is the body content. So this is being injected into the base HTML template. And if we look in here, there it is. So here we're just using a placeholder of content to say, doesn't matter what email we're sending, <clears throat> when we send it, we want to inject whatever content we give you into that place. So if I was sending a beta invitation, I would inject this HTML. So it's literally like me taking this and going like that. Same exact idea, it's just dynamic or automatic, so we don't have to, to do that manually every time. So, reason I explained that is back in send email, this module is responsible for handling that combination process. So it's, it's actually weaving together that, that base template with whatever content we ask for. 
And so not going too far into the weeds here, what this is doing is it's saying, uh, okay, give me the content for the email or give me a template name and variables to populate that template with. Uh, so in this case, I can say I want a specific template relative to this private directory. So I can say the template name is beta-invitation and that's telling this code, okay, I want you to get that file and inject it into the base template. Uh, and so maybe on a different video, we'll go into the real particulars and details of that, but just know that uh, the code I'm about to show you as a demo to, to send this email is relying on this module. So what we're gonna do is inside of, so, so we're now we're back in send notification. We're gonna say import send email and this is in the same directory, so we can just say dot slash and pull that back in. So we're gonna say send email. Now this should be working. And the API for this is going to be, so I gotta remember my own stuff. So I know we've got a two, we've got a subject. And the way that I know this is that this code is a combination of things. So it's combining the, and let's, let's go look at it. It should be at docs.meteor.com. So again, pup is based on Meteor. And so there's an email.send method uh, that's available inside of Meteor. You have to install the email package. Uh, but again, that's included in pup, so you don't have to think about this. So the email.send method is what you'd expect. It's just sending a traditional email. So the, the send email module that I just showed you is my wrapper that I've written around this. So what it's doing is it's allowing us to pass data like from, to, subject, all of that stuff while also taking advantage of that templating concept that I just showed you. So that's not built into this send email function by default. I extended send email to support that. So that's what this code here is doing is it's saying, okay, well, I wanna compile the template and all of that, but you'll notice internally when it calls to send email, it's just passing what I give it over to email.send. So it's basically like a pre-step or a middleman. It's saying, okay, uh, you're gonna send an email, so you gotta get the template built and all that stuff, and then relay that built templates HTML along with all the other variables over to email.send. So that's how this is ultimately getting out. So back here, I'm saying to, from, subject, and then this is the important part. So I've got template, and then I've got template vars. Uh, so in this case, we're completely making this up. So, and, and I think what we'll do again is we'll go into actually wiring this up later because I do need this code. This isn't just uh, randomness. I actually am going to need this. So what I'm going to say is template and inside of email templates, I'm going to need to add this file. So I'm going to say add comment.html and we'll just say somebody added a new comment. And then what we'll also notice, and this is specific to what I'm doing here. So I've got in my base template, I also have uh, something called action. So action is, and again, you wanna think about this email based on its name. So this is transactional email, meaning something happened, we're having a transaction that occurred, so we wanna send out an email in relation to that transaction. So in this case, the transaction is a comment was added and we wanna notify somebody about it. So here we're saying, if an action is defined, and again, this is in our base template, then we wanna render out a button with, that points to a URL and then has, what do I call it, label? Yeah, and it has a label. So the idea here is that in our template, we can have body copy, but then we have a button related to that action or something that the user can do. So in this case, we're gonna say, somebody added a new comment, so, back here in add comment HTML. This is our base template, or excuse me, this is the, the content template for this specific type of email. So back here, I'm going to say add comment is the template name, but then right here in template vars, I'm going to say that, well, there's going to be an action, and this is going to be the button that we can link out to. So this is going to be an action of, uh, what are we saying? We're saying URL, and label, so we'll say view comment is the action that they can perform. And here I'm just gonna say Meteor Absolute URL. And Meteor Absolute URL, what this is doing, this is super important to know about. This is giving you access to the current Absolute URL where the application is running. So on your local machine, 
when you run this, it's likely going to return localhost 3000. And in production, if you, so in my case, it's going to be app.oncommand.io. So that'll be, but the reason you want to use this is so that you don't have to hard code something like uh, process.env, uh, or yeah, what, what the hell is it? Process.env, node.env equals production, you know, do this, do that. This Meteor Absolute URL is just going to automatically negate that because it's just going to say, well, what domain am I currently running on? And it'll just do it for you. So what we can do in this case, and I, again, I'm just making this up. So I'm just going to say here, the, the Absolute URL is going to be something like localhost 3000 slash comments. So you'll notice I ignored the trailing slash or the forward slash here. And that's because Meteor Absolute URL appends that forward slash to the end of itself. So it's localhost 3000 slash is what I'd expect to be returned here. So what we're getting right now is localhost 3000 slash comments slash. And in this case, this is where our payload comes into play. So I'm trying to point the user back to that comment. Well, I expect comment ID to be in the payload that's passed to me for this, uh, for this specific notification. So now I should be able to generate a URL saying, hey, this is the comment you're going to. And again, what's nice about this is I don't care what the comment is or anything like that. I just know that when I send an add comment notification, I expect comment ID to be passed and I expect my, my code to properly handle that and point the user to the correct comment. So what I'm going to do real quick before I forget, I'm going to import Meteor here and not do that. I'm on the wrong computer. I'm used to having different shortcuts. I need to update my key map here inside of VS Code on my laptop. So now we've got Meteor, now we've got send email, so that dependency is filled. So we've got our action, and again, this is going to populate this action block here, this button inside of the base email template. And then add comment here is going to describe the, the content of the email. So if, if I had to verbally explain this, actually, let's see. This might look a little jank because it's not going to... Uh, give me everything, but let's see if we can get it in a browser. Yeah, okay, so that's not bad. So every single email that goes out from command is gonna look like this. The difference being that it's gonna have a title and it's gonna have content. So content here is going to be whatever's in this file. And it's gonna be whatever's in this file because this send email function is expecting a template. So the template here, add-comment, maps to this file name, so add-comment.html, so whatever I put in here. So if I say somebody add a new comment and then this isn't what this will be, but just to demonstrate this, we're going to say someone added a comment first name. So if I add to template var's first name and I say Doug, so back in add comment now, first name is going to be replaced with Doug when the compiler hits that point, which is pretty cool. So what we're doing is we're saying this is the body template and then this is one of the variables that we support. So again, just to make sure that's clear, I could call this pizza and pizza here and it's going to spit out. Now at a higher level, if I wanted to modify my base template, I could, I don't recommend this, but you could, if this was something that was going to be included in every single email, you could add pizza to the base template and it'd be replaced all the same. So something to keep in mind. So back here, we're going to say, we're going to get rid of this, so we're not going to actually have any variable, but now you at least understand what's going on here. And then action here, and you probably just got a hint of this, is something that's supported by the base template. And so when we go to compile all of this, action is going to be defined, so this will be true. So it's going to say, yep, there's an action, and it expects action to be an object with a URL value and a label value. So back over here, we have action as an object with a URL value and a label value. So now in our template, this button is automatically going to say, oh, hey, there's, there's, a, there's an action value, so let me say it. So in this case, this will change to view comment, and if I click on it, it's going to point to this URL. So it's going to point to localhost 3000 slash comment slash comment ID, or whatever URL you put in there, which is pretty neat. So that is basically the fundamental at play here. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to think if we could go any further, but we don't really need to. So I'm going to ignore to, from, and subject. That's pretty self-explanatory. So who's it going to? Where's it coming from? 
and, and what's the subject. So I think I am going to stop here because hopefully this is, this is making enough sense. But the idea here, and, and just to make sure this is clear, let's add another dummy one just to make sure this is clear. So we'll say, uh, let's see, what have I been working on? I've been working on revenue. Um, so why don't we say, uh, well, I know this is going to happen, so I'm going to have a, a weekly revenue report. So weekly revenue report. So I might have some code that's a cron job. So this isn't an, uh, an explicit user action, but I do have a cron job that runs, I don't know, we'll say every 24 hours or once a week. And we'll say when that cron job runs, it's going to call to send notification. So just like, whoop, 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 whoop. There it is. So just like we have down here, it might call to, just to make this clear, we'll, what did I call it? Weekly revenue report. So we'll say weekly revenue report. And now, because this has to do with weekly revenue, we'll just say, uh, I don't know, new customers, 123. And we'll say uh, monthly recurring revenue is now at, I don't know, 9,000 a month or something like that. So the, the point being here that I'm shifting between two different notifications, but the idea is that I can send different data. And so now, back up here in weekly revenue report, I wouldn't expect a common ID, but I would expect monthly recurring revenue and new customers. So now I can pass those along if I want and do something like make those template variables and monthly recurring revenue. So just, yeah, let's, let's close the loop on this. So we'll say uh, revenue report. And then I'll say you have new customers this week. Your current monthly revenue is monthly recurring revenue. And so there we go. Again, same exact principle at play. When this gets compiled, new customers and monthly recurring revenue are going to be replaced by these two values. So in this case, down here, because we passed new customers, one, two, three, monthly recurring revenue, 9,000, back here in revenue report, you have, and I already forgot, you have 123 new customers this week, so that's a good week. And your current monthly revenue is 9,000. So that's how that's going to work out. So again, what's neat about this is I can reuse this send, uh, notification module however I want and send out different stuff. So here, I may not actually even have an action. This is just a, a heads up, like, hey, this is, this is what's going on. So I can get rid of action, and now that button back here is gonna, it's not gonna be there. It's just gonna be you know, a title and some content. And title, I forgot. So uh, title, this is something that I've added custom to this, but I might wanna say uh, title. Um, here is your weekly revenue report. Uh, and same thing up here, we'll just say, just so it's clear, uh, somebody added a new comment. And like right now I'm being kind of lazy, so obviously you can pass whatever data you want. So the more clarity you want to add to your notifications, that's up to you. You're just saying extend that payload object that's ultimately passed in from right here with whatever data you want to send. So. That's going to do it for this first part. I think what we'll actually do next week is we're going to look at putting this to use. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and flesh it out, um, and we'll look at putting this to use. And then I think, because uh, I've, I've been ignoring this um, primarily because I've been doing these on the fly, but this one's going to be a little easier for us to do. I think we're going to write some tests for this. Um, I want to write some, some unit integration tests for this just to show you what it looks like to build something like this kind of from start to finish completely. So not just getting it to work, but getting it to work well. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's going to do it for me this week. Uh, as always, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Hit the bell right next to it if you want to get notifications. And signing off for the HMS Beagle, I'll see you next week, folks.